Hey YouTube, opinionated reviewer here, and in this video I'm going to show you guys how to jailbreak iOS 5.1 and preserve your baseband for an unlock. Yes, this jailbreak is tethered, so keep that in mind. So you're going to have to use iBooty to boot your device tethered every time your battery dies, your phone reboots, or you power off your device. Snowbreeze will automatically create iBooty and put it on your desktop, so don't ask me about iBooty. Now, yes, the jailbreak is tethered for 5.1. As soon as untethered jailbreak comes out, I'm going to make a video on that. But for now, this is what you're going to have to use. If you're on iOS 5.0.1 and you have untethered jailbreak, there's no need to update to this uh, firmware. It doesn't have any features worth um, owning, so just stay there until the untethered jailbreak comes out. Secondly, uh, GVSIM users, this is perfect for you if you want to go ahead and upgrade, keep your baseband, and unlock your device. Once you can go ahead and use this method. Ultra Snow users, I'm not sure if Ultra Snow has yet been updated. I haven't heard any or read anything about it. But as soon as it's been updated, I'm going to alert you guys on Twitter. So if you're not following me on Twitter, follow me on Twitter. I'm going to tweet out the update when it's been updated. And I also answer questions a lot faster on Twitter than I do on YouTube. So yeah, definitely follow me. But yeah, first, this jailbreak supports the iPhone 4, GSM and CDMA, iPhone 3GS, iPad Touch 3rd Gen, iPad Touch 4th Gen, and iPad 1. It does not support the iPhone 4S and the iPad 2, nor the iPad 3. Yes, it does not support any of the A5 and A5X chip devices, only the older A4 chip devices iPhone 4, iPhone 3GS, iPad Touch 3rd and 4 Gen, iPad 1. Now, there's a couple of things you're going to need. You're going to need your Snow Reason, the new one, 2.9.2, and you're going to also need the firmware of the device that you're jailbreaking. So I'm jailbreaking my iPad Touch, so I'm going to use that firmware, but I'm going to show you guys using the iPhone 4 firmware because I want to show you guys the Hacktivate, but I'm going to jailbreak my iPad Touch. Don't worry about that. Just pay attention. So the first thing we're going to do, right-click Snow Breeze, click Properties, Click Compatibility, check off Run This Program in Compatibility Mode 4, check off Windows Service Pack 2, check off Run This Program as an Administrator, hit Apply, then hit OK. Now you're going to open up Snow Breeze, click OK, and it's explaining the same thing for all of, for 5.1, it's tethered, everything up here else is untethered, don't worry about up here, but for iOS 5.1, it's tethered unless you have an iPhone 3GS O boot ROM. It's untethered for that device. If you have an iPhone 3GS O boot ROM, you probably already knew that. But let's go ahead. We're going to click Next. Browse for your firmware. It's going to be on your desktop. See, I'm using iPhone 4 GSM. Click Next. And if you have an iPhone 4 or iPhone 3GS and you do not have your official SIM card to activate your device, you're going to have to activate. For that, we're going to select the Extras Mode option. I'm going to show you guys that. All of these methods preserve your baseband, so don't worry about you selecting the baseband preservation mode. All of these methods preserve your baseband. If you, if you do not know what activates mean, if you, it means if you have an AT&T iPhone, but you do not have an AT&T SIM card to insert in an iPhone to activate it, that means you're going to have to activate. Same thing goes for any lock iPhone. As long as you don't have the chip to activate, you have to activate it. Let's go ahead and click the export mode, general, click next. And iPod Touch users, you could just go ahead and enable battery percentage. If you want to do SSH, you could install that as well. For iPhone and 4 and iPhone 3DS users, if you do not have your official SIM card, you're going to have to select the Hacktivate option. So make sure you select that. Click Next. Click Next. Then click Build IPSW. Click Next. And then Snowbees is going to go ahead and create this IPSW. I'm going to go ahead and come back as soon as Snowbees finish working. It's magic. So now that Snowbees is finished creating the IPSW, as you can see it reads here, use iBuddy to boot your device into a jailbroken state. It's on your desktop. Yes, iBuddy is on your desktop. So nobody asks me where iBuddy is. Let's go ahead and click OK. And we're going to go ahead and put our device into DFU mode. Now if you don't know how to do that, I'm going to go ahead and show you. <clears throat> You're going to go ahead and hold the power and the home button for 10 seconds. Then you're going to go ahead and release the power button and keep on holding the home button for 15 seconds or until Snowbreeze recognizes your iDevice. Let's go ahead. Click, so you're going to have to click start and get ready to go. One, two, three, 
4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Release. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Snowbreeze has recognized that our device is in a DFU state. It's running IREB. Let's go ahead and just click OK. Now you can X out Snowbreeze and go ahead and open up iTunes. Now that iTunes is open up, what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and press Shift on our keyboard and then press Restore in iTunes. So Shift on the keyboard, Restore in iTunes, and we're going to go ahead and look for the firmware that Snowbreeze created. As you can see, it's, uh, it's right here. It says Snowbreeze iPod Touch. That's for me. Yours is going to begin with Snowbreeze. Just look for that. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure it's 5.1. And then we're going to have go ahead and click Restore. Now iTunes is going to work its magic. Remember, if you get any errors around this point, whether it's 1600, 3194, etc., etc., visit the link in the description. It's going to help you fix those errors. Or holler at me on Twitter, and I'm going to point you to a post that's going to help you. So I'm going to come back when iTunes is finished working its magic. Now after the device boots up, you're going to realize that your Cydia is crashing. Don't worry about it. That's normal because it's a tethered jailbreak. Now we have to go ahead and boot tethered. Now we're going to go ahead and go over to our computer. And remember I told you iBooty is on your desktop? Yeah, look for it. So we're going to go find the iBooty folder, open it up, and we're going to go ahead and launch iBooty. After iBooty boots up, just go ahead and select your device. I'm using my iPod Touch 4th Gen, so I'm going to select that. And then you're going to go ahead and click Start. You're going to have to put your device in DFU mode. Remember what we did? Let's go. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Release. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Now iBooty has recognized our device, it's going to go ahead and exploit with Lion Rain and boot it up tethered. Let's just go ahead and wait for it. So now that my device is booted back up, I'm going to go in and my CDO should be working fine. Also your Safari should be working fine as well. It's going to go ahead and prepare the fire system. All you got to do is wait for that to finish. After that's finished, it's going to respring your device. You just go back in. Your CDO should be working fine again. Remember, anytime you have any questions, just hit me up on Twitter. And if you run into any errors, just go ahead to the link in the description. It's going to help you out with any of those errors. 3194, 1600, etc., etc. You are now jailbroken. May the jailbreak force be with you. With that being said, please rate, comment, subscribe. Have a nice day.